Jefferson, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about this. Um, Let's just get started with a little bit about your background kind of growing up and what brought you to starting your current business um, that you're running today. Yeah. So most of my life, I've lived in Fort Worth. So I was born here. And then around 97, 98, my father worked for the Texas Department of Agriculture. He was a regional director. And unfortunately, he passed away in 2005. And uh, we moved back here to Fort Worth around 2007. It had to be 2007 because my sophomore year. Yeah, it was my sophomore year that I started. 2006. Yeah, yeah, it was 2006. And uh, my mom was a manager for was farm for over 20 something years. Well, um, with the window cleaning business, one day me and my wife were on university. We were just looking at the really nice homes over there in the Hewlin Berry area. And uh, so anyway, we were on university and we saw a store whose windows from the street were really, really bad. And she randomly just said, you should start window cleaning business. And I was like, no, nah, I don't think people are really going to have their windows clean like that. I don't see myself doing something like that. Yeah. But I told myself, you know, you have nothing to lose here. Yeah. And you never pick a fight with someone who has nothing to lose. Yeah. So for the next three months, I didn't really do anything with it because that was around I would say this is 2021. That was around 2018, 2018. And um, uh, I made cards and then I went out and talked to people. I hit up Camp Bowie. I mean, Magnolia, uh, South Main. I've hit those little neighborhoods. Yeah. And I told myself if I reach out and at least grab three or four. And then I'll tell the other businesses, hey, I work with such and such or I clean for her and, you know, all these other people. And then from there, it just was a snowball. And it was it was great. All right. So you're in the car with your wife and sh- and you're driving by these windows and she's like, hey, you should start a cleaning company. Mm-hmm. So in, in legitimately like the week after that, tell me what happened from there. Like when was when did you finally go, OK, I'm at least going to give it a try? Oh, that's a good question. So I got a lot of good questions. Coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be ready. Yeah. So the next week, I, it was actually crazy. Before she actually told me that, I think it was like maybe a couple of weeks before she actually said that, I saw a guy at a McDonald's over in Keller and he was cleaning windows. He was an older gentleman, but I just didn't really think of it, think anything of it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't actually think that guys, actually go to those sort of places because usually it's the employees that clean those places so i was like oh that's pretty cool and then my wife said that i was like i don't i don't know but the week after that i played around with uh like a logo how i'm gonna make the card what i'm gonna call it you know just thinking all these cool things because when i was a kid i would freehand draw and i would trace so i like doing art yeah. And I actually wanted to be an artist when I was a kid. <laughs> but that, but my, my mom said, I don't think there's a career in doing that, right? <laughs> but I was like, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, I played around with colors and all this stuff. And I made a draft, but then I didn't do anything with it for the next couple months. Yeah. I didn't print out or anything. I just kind of played around with it. And then finally, I say after close to three months, I printed it and um, went out and started talking with people. Okay, so you waited until your logo and kind of your branding was done so that when you went out to the market, you kind of had something to show them. Yeah. And at the time, I was uh, I had a full time job. Okay, so I I was I was still trying to think of what I'm going to do with my future. Yeah. Um, Am I really going to try to do this or am I going to stay with this company or am I going to move on somewhere? I just was at a crossroads really at that point. Yeah. What Mm -hmm. were you doing? I was working for a physical therapy clinic in Keller. So this was going to be like a side hustle at night or on the weekends or something to get started. Pretty much. 
pretty much. Did did uh did you do any kind of in that three months while you were waiting to get started? Did did you like watch any videos on how to clean windows mm-hmm. or get any like who taught you how to clean a good window? Dude, <laughs> myself. Okay. Like I that's what that's what I was hoping to get to. Yeah. I basically I tell a joke. I said I graduated from YouTube University. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I looked at those. I, I looked at the equipment and the things that they poles that they the the professionals used. Right. Yep. There are different techniques, and you know how what challenges did they have to face? What things were hard? What things were easy? I wanted to understand. Yeah, it's it's probably like, well, you're just cleaning the glass. So like, well, if you're starting a business, it's a business. So how are you going to make your goal of how much you want to make or what's going to be your expenses? You know, where the things in that profit loss and all this stuff. So, yeah. you know, it's more than just learning the technique or whatever you're trying. To, you could take, I said to myself, you can take this. And I've heard this from other people. You can take the business as far as you want. Right. You know, I'm not even in high rise, so right. It's you can scale as much as you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're you're on YouTube. You graduate from YouTube University. Mm-hmm. Just for the sake of somebody that might be like wanting to do whether it's not window cleaning or just kind of any kind of what we'll call sweaty startup job, like a service business. What were you were you learning how to clean? Were you more focused on how to run a business? Like, what were you trying to learn to get yourself comfortable that this would be? You know, or were you just saying, look, I'm just going to go clean one window and then I'm going to clean a second and just take it from there. Yeah. So I just, I just, uh, I didn't take, I guess, the business sort of route um, as a, as a, uh, as like a big goal. Yeah. I would say, uh, yeah, like you said, I'm going to, I'm going to clean this place, this place, this place, see how far I get. And then I guess I'll just figure it out on the way because it was just by myself. Yeah. Um, I didn't really go to a lot of people that I knew personally that, you know, how did you manage people? How did you manage all these places? Like, how did you organize your business? I kind of figured that out on my own. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how I did it. That's pretty much the answer. And that's what I was hoping to get to is like a lot of starting something is just figuring it out. Mm-hmm. There, there is no like perfect way to do it. Everybody does it their own way. Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay. So you got your cards, you got your website, you got your branding, you're ready to start hitting the streets. T- walk me through what it was like to get that first customer. Man, um, my first customer... Uh, it was so yeah. That, that's actually a funny story. <laughs> My wife uh, was actually trying to start her own business, uh, doing uh, event planning. Okay, and it was at a uh, what was the name of the place? Creme de la Creme. Okay, K Company, and uh, I actually had cards. Right, I had them. I just had them in my car. <laughs> well, long story short. Uh, Jamie said, no, my windows really need some cleaning. And my wife looked at me and she said, you got your cards? I was just like, yeah. She's like, why don't you just ask her? I'm like, well, (laughs) she could say, yeah, she could say yes. She could say no. I was like, okay. So (laughs) I didn't tell my mom because I didn't want her to think like, oh, here's another crazy thing that Jefferson's trying to do. And I gave her my card and she said, when can you come? I was like, next week. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, uh, some of her other business neighbors that were ne- next door to her, they were interested too. So that was already three off the bat. Like, How'd you know what to her. charge them? I, you know, like go back to YouTube University a guy said, you can go by the pain or you just charge your minimum. Yeah. And that's what I did. I yeah. just charged the minimum. What's the minimum? Like, how'd you know what the minimum was, I guess? I guess like a regular storefront, to me, I started out at around, I mean, what was it, like 40 bucks? 
35, 40 bucks. And then per window or per hour? No, no, for like, well, per hour, but for the storefront itself. Yeah. Like, yeah. D- depending on the size, like, um, like a regular storefront, I would charge like at first it was 40 bucks. And then once I got busier, then it was like 50 bucks. And, you know, if it was a bigger size than a storefront, I would probably charge more. Or if it was smaller, I'd just charge less. But I started like my minimum at 40 bucks. And then now it's like around 50, something like that. All right. So uh, your first was the cake company. Mm -hmm. So you go and you clean that store. Like, what was it like to one, get your first job done? What Mm -hmm. did that customer tell you? Like, how'd you feel after that first job? It felt really good. And what's crazy is it took me, (laughs) it took me like almost an hour in the hot sun. I think it was, it had to have been during the summertime. Yeah, it was during the summertime. And I'm just looking at myself in the mirror or not in the mirror, the, the, the window. And I'm like, bro, how long are you going to take? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, are you trying to like make this window to a Picasso? Like, are you kidding me right now? Like, you need to get done and go to the ne- guy next door. <laughs> it's taking 45 minutes. And I literally looked at the clock because I, I, it probably took me, it shouldn't have taken me this long, but you just I wanted it like, perfect. I did. Like, I wanted it to be like pristine. <laughs> <laughs> it took me like 20 minutes for the outside. And then when I went inside, I was like, man, I got to do the inside too. Forgot. And it took me like another 20 minutes, but I got it done. I love it. Yeah. Uh, that's so funny. How how much did it, how much, uh, what did you have to buy to start this? Like how much money did you have to invest? To, like when mm-hmm. you first started, was it just a bucket, some water and like a mop or, or a window mop? Or what you, what was your investment like? Yeah. So I think my initial investment was, oh man. A little over a hundred dollars because that because now now here's the thing. I I got a traditional bucket and pole from like a Home Depot. But as far as the rubbers and the squeegees, I got all of those online because I knew that if I wanted to take myself seriously, but I wanted other people to take me seriously, I got professional equipment, not the rinky dink. Yeah equipment that you get at a at a regular store you know so how much did that so like for the stuff at home depot plus the squeegees Mm -hmm. online like what'd you put into it it had to been around one i mean i think it was like 130 okay obviously yeah it had been around 130 it wasn't close to 200 it was a little like in the middle so you do like three jobs and you've already made your money back pretty much and now it's now you're have you had to since you started, have you had to buy more equipment or like the same stuff you bought mm-hmm. still works or have yeah. you upgraded or? Oh, I've upgraded some things. Yeah. Uh, like now I have a way better pole. Um, like I had a regular aluminum pole. Then I upgraded to like a carbon fiber pole. Yeah. Um, as far as, you know, squeegees, I started, I always used the premium stuff like Sorbo and, and, uh, you know, Unger and all these other brands that are known for, uh, to the world. And, uh, uh, I would say, you know, the rubbers, I got those online too. So yeah, yeah, I just bought, I just added on to my equipment. And it worked. So now I want to talk about a little bit about business development, because one of the reasons we're sitting here on the podcast today is I still remember the day you came and knocked on our door and then every time mm-hmm. I see you when you're cleaning our building's windows, we always have a chat in the parking lot, or at least we'll say, hey, or what's up? Yeah. Uh, and before we started this, you kind of were just saying, you know, one of the things that's important to you is kind of your traditional upbringing and how you feel that you do well making connections with customers and people. So let's just talk about that. So you you got your first customer in person, but what's been the success for you to continue getting more customers? Like, what's your secret sauce? I would say, you know, some people believe in who you know will get you farther. So I, once I had enough people, I wanted to, um, I wanted to use my relationships with other people that I know because everyone 
in the forward community is like really tight and really friendly. So I wanted to use that at to my advantage to talk with other people. So, you know, with with the business development, I believe in talking with people in person, uh, shaking their hand. They can see your demeanor, your character, your body language, because people feed off that. That people feed off your energy. And you know, people have told me, you know, you know, you are really you speak well of yourself. And I was like, yeah, I try to take myself not too seriously, but, you know, I want to take myself seriously to show you that I care about other people's business as much as I do. You know, we're all trying to figure this out together, really. Yeah. So you came to, so how'd you even find Fort Capital? Man, I <laughs> I was <laughs> driving because I saw these buildings being built and the crazy thing is, from when I went to the, uh, is this 10? This is 101 this, and the other one's 105. 105. So I went to 105 and I, like I said, I was trying to figure things out on my own. I thought that the building itself, they took care of things, but, you know, it's through another company, like another management company. And I didn't know that. <laughs> and yeah. so I, I, um, I reached out to the management company and I talked with them and they said, well, give us a bid, this and that. And, uh, you know, it, yeah, I went from there really. Yeah. And that was actually where I learned that lesson because at that point I was trying to figure out, I want to stay in the commercial aspect of window cleaning. Yeah. And I want to get big places like this, like big buildings, but I didn't know who to talk to, where to go. And I figured that out actually at Fort Capital, which is actually funny. Oh, really? It really did. So, okay. So you learned that. And then what did you do? Start going to every other building and sure using did. the same strategy? Sure did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> and when you were talking about everybody in the community knows each other, like once one uh, way to meet somebody else might be, hey, I do work for Fort Capital. I know you might know them or yeah. like try and bring up something relevant. And then they're like, oh, okay, let's chat. Mm -hmm. It's always easier to get a customer if there's more of like a warm introduction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, it, someone told me this before that the real estate in Fort Worth, people know each other. It's just like with hospitality. Yeah. Uh, people, they you know, move around somewhere or another. They meet each other through, you know, channels or wherever they've met. They probably work together and they start their own thing. They just, they just know yeah. each other in some way. So how would you, how do you bid a building? Like, let's take this red brick building we're in right now, mm -hmm. three stories. Do you count it by the window? Like, how do you bid on a place like this? Yeah, so... Some guys do it hourly. Okay. I do it by pain. Okay. That's just, that was what I found easy for me. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. They, I just count how many windows I charge a different. So, yeah, I charge, um, let's just say, for example, the bottom floor, I charge $4. And then the second floor, I charge $5. And the Next one, I do what maybe seven, depending on how many floors it is. Yeah, I just up the price a bit per window because it's more difficult the higher up you go. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it gives your shoulders a workout. Does it still take you forty five minutes to clean a window? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what uh what is the uh what is the difference between like residential cleaning and commercial cleaning? Is it much different? It's yeah, it's much different. Okay, why? Uh, well, you're, how can I say, you're dealing with someone's home that they live in. So mm -hmm. they're going to want to pay attention to a lot more detail because in a regular window, you have the screen, you have the seals, you have the window itself. Uh, some might have all this dust and, you know, you people haven't cleaned their windows at all before. Yeah. So they are counting on you to give them advice or 
whatever they need in order to either maintain it whenever they will just take over the ship or you may come back, but you're just telling them, hey, for instance, I had one client where they had a sprinkler system and I told them, you see all these wire spots, you can't leave that there because it's going to over time damage it to a point where you probably won't ever take it off because I had to use a razor yeah. to take off things like that. And, uh, you know, it's just having the knowledge and telling them, hey, you know, you have to keep up with this or that. So I would say, you know, with commercial, it is to me, what I found is more consistent because it's more of a monthly bi-monthly, weekly account versus with the house, rarely you will find a monthly house clean for their windows. Um, But what I've seen, it's either going to be quarterly or maybe a bi-yearly thing, like two times a year. That was going to be my next question. When you sign up an account, maybe we'll focus the majority of the rest of the episode on commercial. Do you tell them up front, like, if I call you, hey, I need my building clean. Mm -hmm. Do you just try and come clean at once? Or do you try and tell me, hey, let's get on a plan quarterly or biannually, and then we kind of schedule it from there? Yeah, so I give them two different bids. So for a home, I would say... Let's let's focus on a building. On a building. So if it's like a storefront, I would say the minimum is like once a month. Okay. Once a month. That's great. Yeah. And you just get on retainer with them. That's it. And some of them prefer in and really some of them prefer like a I would say like a burger joint. They want weekly because they have people come in all the time and you'd be surprised how dirty they get. Cause I do one now and their windows are always constantly dirty every week. Yeah. Especially when you're coming there with kids and, you know, just People in general, somehow yeah. people are messy. They are <laughs> sometimes kind of scary. Like, <laughs> do you do this at your house? <laughs> like, do you have ketchup and mustard on your table and salt and pepper all over your floor and all that stuff? So, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, burger joints. I clean those like once a week. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I tell the minimum at least once a month. But if you want me to come out. I would say with clubs, they like theirs done every two weeks. Yeah. So that's that's what I found. How many customers do you have now? Oh, dude, I need to go back and see. I think now it's like maybe over 100. So you started this thing at the end of 2018. You're like two and a half years into it. You have over 100 customers. Pretty much. Have you ever had to fire a customer? And say, like, dude, I'm not doing work for you anymore. You don't have to tell me who. No, no. Um, or you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking. I I don't think I have. No. Cool. But when COVID happened, unfortunately, I lost maybe three. Okay. Three of them actually had to That's not bad. shut down. That's permanently. not bad. Yeah. But eventually, but it kind of scared me because I was like, Maybe they, you know, with some places closing, I was just like, well, I don't know how far this is going to take, but some of them probably are not going to make the money that they did. And I don't know if they ever have me back, but fortunately, I got a bulk of my people back, yeah, which is actually amazing. That's why I go back to that relationship thing. You know, when people see that you're serious. They're going to want you back every day. So for whatever so so you have a hundred customers most Mm. of them are on like a recurring schedule Mm -hmm. so it's pretty i don't know if the word's easy but it's kind of easy for you to kind of plan out how much money you're going to make that month because you're like look here's all my customers here's all my bookings Mm -hmm. and you know that they're going to call you back the next month or the next quarter no doubt yeah Mm -hmm. who sets all your calendar up and all your bookings do you use do you do that (laughs) do you use like a software or something or you just use outlook yeah i use uh well i just go in there on so I, I use QuickBooks to see how many people I have to make sure I didn't miss anybody. And then I plan out my calendar on Google Calendar. Who taught you QuickBooks? YouTube University? 
<laughs> no, I haven't. Well, <laughs> I kind of figured, yeah, I figured that out on my own, but I have an accountant that now does all the, that keeps up with all the profit and loss and things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what, what does like a typical day look like for you? What time do you wake up? Actually crazy. I wake up no later than eight o'clock. Okay. Like my body just has gotten used to waking up either at eight o'clock or earlier. I always sometimes even set my alarm because I'm going to wake up at that time. And how many jobs will you do in a day? In a day, probably no more than five. Depending if I have to leave early, then I'll pick up the other places. But usually around four or five, if not six, if uh, if it's smaller. So how do you split your time between cleaning kind of admin work like scheduling and billing and then finding new customers so during so that's when i I try to plan out my whole month uh i usually do well the admin work that's constantly whenever i get done with the place i send them an invoice or i have to record it sometimes they don't want one and i'm always on my phone trying to record things like that I really do the bulk of my admin on either the weekend or sometimes I'll just work on stuff during the week after work, like at night, um, just to make sure who I hit. Did I record this? Did I not record or whatever with QuickBooks in my calendar and stuff like that? What's like, what are some of the things as you think about growth? Like, what are the biggest things you want help on as you grow? employees yeah do you have any employees yet one and and is he a cleaner yeah okay yeah do you train Uh, him yeah i trained him he already had some experience but he needed a little more polishing and i trained him and he can go on by himself and take care of places that i want him to get taken care of and i'm i've been saying this for a while now but i'm probably going to be close to hiring a second person uh part-time because he's part-time and then we get another part-time guy to help me out so like a job will come in and you'll just kind of call that person up for the week and say here are your jobs for the week Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. or i'll just i figured out a way on google calendar where i can make like a little profile for him Mm -hmm. and i could just set up to where he could just see his calendar and i can see mine separately and uh so on and so forth and just do it that way so do you have any a- ambitions to grow this business, either growing like like you had said earlier, maybe into high rises, or do you want to get into other service lines? Like, are there other things that you've seen while you're at a building that you could be doing? So I thought of that. I thought about adding on pressure washing, but, you know, so it had soft house cleaning, like the outside, you just spray it and clean it. But I'm at a point where it's just like, you know, I'm not trying to be a big old millionaire trying to make all this money like i just want to live comfortably yeah which i am i am living comfortably um but my main thing that i want to do is sort of just sit back a bit not get lazy but just be behind the scenes at this point yeah you don't want to be cleaning every day yeah i don't want to be clean literally i don't want to be clean every day why my shoulders are literally giving out and I wake up and I'm just like, dude, what am I doing with my body? Cause my, I would be able to just rebound. My body will be okay. But it's getting to the point where I haven't been to a doctor yet, but my shoulders are just something I tweaked. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Cause it started my left and now it's my right. I'm like, dude, what is going on? And so, that's just from like, mopping the the windows mm-hmm. every single damn day yes yes like it's it's constant like you know you get up constant get up constant get up it's it really does take a toll a bit because really trying to keep up with your accounts i think that's why i found tough yeah you know the getting and talking with people i found that that's not actually the hard part anymore because I have the clients. If I wanted to, I can go get four or five more. But from where I'm at, it's just like I need to slow down because I don't want to grow too fast 
Yeah. And that's how some businesses fail. It's like you scale way too fast. Yeah. And you just can't keep up. And now you're done. Yeah. You know. So if you were to hire another person, let's just say you could hire enough cleaners to take care of all the clients. Then what do you see your job being? More business development and kind of working on the business and training people? Or like, what do you, what would you want to do if you weren't cleaning anymore? I guess just doing like the behind the scenes, like, yeah, like you said, uh, probably talking with other people or, or um, you know, just doing the invoicing, scheduling, you know, kind of taking it an easy step back. And because uh, I've, I've thought about trying to find another, I guess, avenue of income. I just don't know what that is yet. I'm trying to play around with a few things, but I want to find something that is going to just keep me busy with the window cleaning business as well. So you've created this successful business. You have a hundred clients, like you've got recurring revenue. You said you're living a comfortable life. When you started in 2018, that from that day that your wife was like, Hey, let's start this window cleaning company. If you were talking to somebody today, that's on the fence, like what would be the like key things that you've learned along the way that if you were to go start another business, like maybe those fears that you once have, you don't have anymore. Mm -hmm. Or like what have been some of the big lessons now that you're two and a half years into this, that if somebody was sitting here saying, you know, I'm on the fence about starting something, uh, like what would you tell them? I would say the easiest thing because you want it to make, you want it to be real to you as possible because you still do have that fear. People have fear of rejection. They, they don't like failure, which you have to be comfortable with that. And I've had to tell myself that you, I said, I told myself when I started, Trey, you're going to have people say no. You're going to have people say no. So (laughs) that's okay because Maybe they're not. And I've actually had this happen before. People that have said no, they've actually said, hey, actually, we could use this. I, that's happened before. Um, I think if you just accept that, you know, you're going to get rejection. But what I started off doing was I went on trying to develop how I want my logo to look, you know, have fun with it. You know, what colors do you want to use or what do you want to name it? Like play around with it a bit. And so that's going to help you take yourself seriously about the business. And they're you're going to say to yourself, well, maybe this could work because they're going to see your personality in that logo or name of your business, you know, and, uh, you know, It's just one of those things. There's no such thing to me as perfect timing. Yeah. You just have to do it. Just do it. Like like Nike says. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. it. (laughs) (laughs) Two things you said there that I really like. The first one uh, was when you said that you were making the website and the logo. I have a buddy, Andrew Wilkinson, that that owns several businesses. And he says something similar. is like just the act of getting your mind Mm -hmm. into getting a domain name and making a name and a logo makes it feel more real. So he's like, when I want to get something started, I just get started on something, which is what makes the ball start moving down the hill. I totally agree. And then, and then dealing with rejection. So maybe a follow-up question to that is you come to me, Hey, Chris, I want to clean your windows. And I'm like, sorry, I don't want you to clean my windows. Mm -hmm. How do you handle it? Like, do you just say, okay, do you kind of continue to try and tell me why I need to clean windows? Like, how do you handle rejection? Yeah. So with some places, I, when that did happen, I will say, okay, well, can I just check back with you in the next three months or something? You know, cause you still, you may not get to a number of customers that you would like. So you want to go back and develop a rapport, yep. you know, just say, okay, well, just keep my card and I'll just check back with you in the next couple of months. Sometimes their minds change. Sometimes they still don't. They just either don't want it because what I found is people up and leave their job. Some people end up leaving and it might be a different person. They may be interested. Yeah. So if you keep up with places like that, yeah, 
And, uh, you know, it, yeah, I, I believe that once you get comfortable enough, you have all these people, then maybe you want to go back to that place or not and talk to them. So you, you just figure out who you want to, I guess, clean for, not clean for. But a no to you, it rolls off your back now. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It really does. I mean, I'm too busy to even try to, as, at, sometimes I just, I sometimes I say to myself, Trey, you're just too busy trying to add on another person. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I add on another person, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I figure out a way, and I really do. <laughs> what What's your pitch? So if you walk in and you're talking to someone, maybe the first time you hired a customer, you got a customer, now you're at 100. Like, what do you tell people? So I just go ahead and say, hi, my name is, hi. I will, actually, I asked for the general manager or the owner. I've always been taught, try to talk to the highest person in the room. Yeah. So if it's now, if you end up talking with a manager, like regular manager, like, yeah, they say they'll talk to the person, but I found that seven times out of 10, it's probably not going to happen. So you want to, if I didn't go talk, so that going back to that question, whenever I talk about rejection, try to get that general manager or the owner at that point. So I go up to him and say, hi, my name is Jefferson. I own a small window cleaning business, uh, Davis Glass Cleaning Company. And I cleaned for, you know, such and such, like I would say, you know, Beer Lady, Hop Fusion, Southside Cellar, you know, Tinnies, Taco Heads. When I say those names, like people are like, oh, you know those guys? Like, yeah, I mess with those guys. Like, yeah. they're cool. <laughs> like, and uh, from there, they say, okay. Either they say, well, we can't do it now. Can you check back with me in another month? Or no, that's probably not what we're interested in right now. Um, but yeah, that's how I talk to them. I say, hey, I, I'm part of the neighborhood, so to say, like an unofficial member of the neighborhood. And then do you tell them on the way out if they reject you? You're like, all right, well, you got some dirty ass windows. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> you can get Joe Schmo over here if you want. <laughs> uh, so how often do you have to replenish equipment? And do you uh, are you constantly saving a little bit on the side, knowing that you're going to have to update equipment along the way? Like in two and a half years, have you had to replace equipment a bunch, or it stays pretty durable? Yeah, it, it stays pretty durable. But as far as rubber. I would say I buy rubber every two to three months, I would say, because they go off. I mean, they, they're used quickly. And rubber's just the the thing at the very end that mm-hmm. you squeegee the windows with. Yep. So yep. how do you clean a good window? Like, is there a secret or can anybody do it? I say anybody can do it. Yeah. It's the service industry is definitely something you can make money in. Yeah. You just have to want to do that. Yeah. You know, some people are not cut out doing clean windows or cleaning floors or things like that. Is that because of their ego? Like they think they're above that? I think so. Some some people are. Some people just really don't want to get up and do hard labor work. Because you look at it and you're you see dollar signs. Other people look at it and see like, I don't want to stand out in the sun all day. Dude, this is an opportunity. At first, it's the you know it's funny. When I did start, I felt sort of this shame why i don't know like i don't want people and that's the thing i had to get over that too i've had a hard time when i was a when i was younger about how people would look at me or what people thought of me you know i said to myself look people who probably look at you you don't know why they are maybe they have something going on in their life that they just whatever like they just can't handle it or you know they just don't like their job or whatever it is you know but you have something to be proud of and you're one of a million people in the u.s that actually own something a lot of people really can't say that you know and you know with us here in the room it's like we made something out of nothing yeah or we made nothing out of something, I'm sorry. And we're self-made men, yeah. you know, or 
a, a lady, you know, it's that's the American dream. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, so I, I did have a bit of shame, but at first, I mean, at first I did, but afterward I was like, you know what? I look at the places I have, this is the most money I've ever made in my life. So I'm proud to say, like, I actually started this literally with a mop and a squeegee and some cards. You know, it's really not that hard. You just have to get up and just just give it a just give it your best. Like Stan Lee said it best. It's like if you genuinely have a good idea, go out and try to do it. Because at first he when he it's got actually funny, he told a story when he had Spider-Man, he pitched this idea. They said, no, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> and now it's a billion dollar Marvel character. They're making movies and countless comic books. So, yeah, Spider-Man was a bad idea. But he said, no, forget y'all. I'm going to try to make this work. And it did. So you're now you have 100 cuts. So now how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? That's how you felt when you started. Now, how do you feel? Yeah, at first I was just like, dude, I don't know if this is even going to work. And like I have a couple people is, is growing, but I don't know if I can even get to I don't know if I can even get to 20. And why do you I, think, why do you think you thought that? Was that just self-doubt or? A little bit of self-doubt. Yeah. A little bit of self-doubt. And you just don't, it's, it's more of like, it's, it's the unknown. So it's like, what, how's it going? How's this business going to look in the next six months? Cause I thought to me, you know, I probably wasn't even going to get 20 clients in six months. But actually got 20 clients in close to two months. Like it sky, I mean, it was I was getting people left and right. And I was like, dude, this can actually work. Yeah. Cause I was still working. Well, after I had gotten my seventh, because I was still working full time, but I asked them if I could work part time. And after I got my seventh or eighth person, I was like, okay, I'm about to jump ship. I hope this really works out. Like I'm gonna work hard at this and it turned out to be a really good opportunity was there some was there a particular moment or it was just the amount of clients and the income you saw that you finally said like i'm ready to to jump ship yeah i was making what i was making in my full-time job i was making that in half the time yeah yeah. like not even close yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) i was working probably cleaning windows i would say maybe 10 15 hours or something like that. And, uh, you know, my part-time, full-time hour job, I was making just as much. So I was like, I think I'm going to, I think, I think it's time to leave. How important was a supportive wife? Very much. Yeah. Very much. You know, I go back to that shame kind of thing. Uh, I think some people feel that, you know, with a job, the way it looks like a service and you're cleaning carpet or floors. It's just like you, people may think that it's a, a poor man's job or something, yeah. but thankfully, you know, she was, uh, and it's that ego. Like she just said, you know, I support you, whatever you try to do, I will support you. And without her really, I never would have even started this business, you know? She, does she, she ever, she's great. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. So she's like your biggest fan. Yeah, she is. Does she ever work in the business or help you with it? Yeah, she tried. <laughs> 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 Probably three times out of the whole almost three years of my business. <laughs> she said, <laughs> I, I know I thought the idea, but I can't do this. <laughs> I was just like, okay. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Uh, maybe, so, you, okay. So you said you looked at power washing. And you've now gotten over the ego because like one of the things that's most impressive to me is every time I've seen you, uh, which is usually when you're at our buildings or maybe you're in the lobby of our office, it just seems like you're always super busy. It, I know your shoulders hurt, but Mm -hmm. I always see you with your headphones in and you're just kind of going to town. Um, and now you're seeing dollar signs from it. I mean, you telling me that you made as much money in 10 or 15 hours. I think the thing that's most interesting to me as I continue to look at the world is like these opportunities exist everywhere. And everybody thinks of a startup now as like it's got to be some tech company or some app. When in reality, 
you're like one broom away or a, a window squeegee away from like changing your life. Yes. And, <clears throat> you know, I've actually talked with some guys and they said that they used to clean windows. Like they did it when they were in college. They would clean windows, but they finished their degree and they just moved on. And, you know, it, it, you don't have to be a, <sighs> A Jeff Bezos or anything like that. You don't have to think of the next bit, big thing yeah. to make it big. Sometimes you just need to start small, like yeah. make goals for yourself. If you want to make an app, okay, great. But you're probably going to need some money coming in while you're trying to figure that out yeah. or you're trying to do stocks or whatever it is. You got to start with something. Yeah, You know, you got to, you want to or stay at your job and try to figure out wherever app or thing you're trying to do, but there's a lot of ways to make money. Yeah. There's so many ways yeah. and you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to think of the next big thing. You know, some people don't and they've done great for themselves. Yeah. There, there's money laying all over. You just got to get up and you, get it. Yes. Yes. And I think the biggest thing that I've learned just from you on this one is like a lot of it's the ego thing is like quit, quit, you know, judging yourself for the work you're doing, just go get started. Cause there's a lot of money to be made in doing things that some people look at as like, I don't want to get off my ass to go do that. Exactly. Yeah. Like people just really don't want to get up in the morning and just go and work. Um, because I think when you're sometimes working a nine to five, you feel like, well, this is just it. Well, you have just as much opportunity as the guy next to you. Yeah. You know, you really just have to get up and just, you just have to do it. Yeah. Just make it, you just got to, I mean, I just don't. Every time someone's asked me, like, what's like, I'm like, you might not like this answer, but a lot of the the equation early on is like, you just got to get up and go do it. There is mm -hmm. no magic solution. There is You just got to start. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And people want to work with people that they like. You show up. You're presentable, you're passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. and that just kind of keeps snowballing upon itself. Yeah, I totally agree. What's, yes. what's been your biggest uh, like failure, or if you look back over the three years, like what's been the worst day of work you've ever had? Like, did you break a window on accident, or like what's one day that you, you went home at night and told your wife, like, I can't believe I did this today? Dude, this was very <laughs> recent. <laughs> <laughs> Actually broke a window out of a person's house. <laughs> And I was like, thank good she got insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I told the lady, I had, um, so I was using a water fed system where basically you have this three stage or four, it, mine's is three stages, but you plug it into um, a wire spigot. The water feeds through it and it goes through three stages. It goes to the carbon filter, their RO tanks. And then the DI tank has a final polishing and it takes all those purities out of the water. It is actually clean water. So when it dries, there's no dirt in it. So when you scrub the window, it will just cascade off the window. While I was using that system in my with my brush, I was kind of in a closed spot and I used too much pressure because it was an older home. It was like probably building the 40s. And I had went in and it just fell apart and i was like the lady had was actually going into a meeting and i was like dude you have to hurry up and tell her because either that or you're gonna have to stay for a whole hour until she gets done and i was like hey you broke your glass window i'm sorry <laughs> she came I was, she came outside she said okay, I'm not panicking. I'm not mad at you. We're going to figure this out. <laughs> we're going to try to, we're, we're going to get this done. And um, I was like, look, and I thought, dude, it's going to be a crap ton of money to get this thing fixed. Thankfully, she knew someone that, uh, and that's where you learn from your failure. Like, yeah. you can only make the best out of it. So, what I got of it was, you know, she knew a guy who she actually owns some property, some, well, yeah, some properties and she, or he does work for her. So she called him up and I paid the tab and 
I thought it was going to be like a thousand something dollars because it's really expensive to fix a window. And it was only a couple hundred bucks. So yeah, yeah, it worked out. And I actually got his contact to say, hey, I might have some other broke glass I'm going to do. <laughs> Can I call you up? <laughs> so he said, yeah, just just let me know. Give me a holler. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. Maybe a few personal questions. Mm-hmm. You built an awesome business, man. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I always love seeing you in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, I'm sure you'll be cleaning us again soon. It's been a bit. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to be, uh, I tell though- this joke to people. I was like, you know, I'm working on my tan. I'm going to be as dark as this couch right here. <laughs> <laughs> See, I always get somebody. <laughs> I always get somebody to do that. <laughs> Almost out of his chair. All right. Do you have a childhood kind of experience or the way you grew up that kind of shaped who you are today? Like was maybe something that happened or like a one-off event or maybe just something that your parents did for you or something that kind of shaped who you are today? Yeah, just really good parenting. Yeah. You know, thankfully, I was raised around a family that really cared about values. And uh, my dad, uh, he and my mom, they taught me and my brother and my sister, yes, man, we're no man, especially growing up in the South. Like you say, yes, man, no man, you're respectful. They really tried hard to all keep us whatever we're doing to take yourself seriously, but be polite. Don't let someone take advantage of you. That's what they really, my dad taught me a lot was don't let people take advantage of you. Yeah. You know, I love it. Yeah. He, my dad was six, close to six, two. Yeah. Really intimidating. And kids will say in school, like, dude, your dad's really tall. And I look at him like, okay, I don't see how tall he is. But looking back at the pictures, I actually did not know this. And I wish I actually brought this picture in. When he uh, was still working, well, when he was alive, he was working in Texas Department of Agriculture. He met Nolan Ryan. <laughs> and all this time, I would say two years ago, as I'm looking at this picture, I never knew who this guy was <laughs> in the picture. And I look at it again because it's on my desk. I said to myself, that's freaking Nolan Ryan. <laughs> he took a picture of him and he was actually taller than Nolan Ryan. Really? I was like, so yeah, my dad was tall. Yeah. I just, I didn't put two and two together. I was like, yeah, my dad was, my dad was tall. So, I love it. Yeah. You know, but now they, they taught me, they, they taught us, they taught us really good life morals and values. Do you have kids yeah. yet? No kids. Are you going to teach them the same thing? If I have some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna have some or you just you're still waiting to to still, know? Still waiting. Yeah. I told myself if I don't have a kid by I'm thirty now, if I don't have a kid by thirty five, I think it's gonna be a wrap. Yeah. For me. Yeah. It's probably gonna be a wrap. Uh what's the best advice you've been given along the way besides which I wrote down, never pick a fight with someone that has nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. I love that quote. Thank you. Um know your worth. You know, when you, my mom would say, whenever you start, whenever you do something, try to make your own business out of it because she, she owns her own business in tax preparation. So I didn't know this, but we came from a family of entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, you know your worth yeah, and no one can really stop you in doing what you want to do if it's a genuine if it's genuinely a good idea then go out and do it but um don't let someone just put you in a corner and yeah. say you know you can only do this or you can do that or don't limit yourself yeah my parents did not limit us into doing other things that other people would say oh that's boring or you know not but they exposed us to a lot of other things and didn't limit us. They said, no, you're going to learn how to do this or we're going to go do this or all that. We always took family trips and things like that. Yeah. You know, get outside the box and, you know, they, you know, they did a really good job with us. That's awesome, man. All right. How can people uh, find you and your company? Well, you can go on 
my website, Davis Glass Co. Dave, Davis Glass Co. Dot com, or on my Instagram, Davis Glass Cleaning Company. And uh, that is the main two areas because you could, act, or you could reach me on my phone. You could find it on the website or on Instagram. You could go on and DM me or request in my Instagram and website are all linked together. Thank you very much for joining me today, dude. You've built an awesome business and it's really inspiring. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, buddy.